Um, so just to say again, thank you so much for inviting us in to share about our project. Um, we've kind of called our project Beachmont Abroad Morocco, um, and we're excited to share more about the project with you. Okay, so just to introduce ourselves, my name is Irene Cassidy. I'm an ELL teacher at the Beachmont. I teach grades kindergarten and first. This is my third year in Revere. And I am Chelsea Pollock, also an ELL teacher at Beachmont in grades four and five, and also an ELL teacher at Seacoast High School. Also my third year in Revere. Okay, so a little bit about why we chose Morocco. We started last fall, we sent out a cultural survey to all of our students, and through that we found that 20% of our students self-identified as Moroccan. So given this large population, we saw an opportunity to strengthen our own understanding of Moroccan culture, um, share some teaching implications with colleagues, increase visibility of Moroccan culture, and also <coughs> build and strengthen our Moroccan um, ties with family. So to tell you a little bit more about the organization that funded our grant and our grant application process, um, the group is called the Fund for Teachers. Um, it's a national nonprofit that lets teachers design their own professional development to find a project that really suits their teaching context. Um, so given the information that Irene shared with you about the results of our survey and knowing that we had this large population of Moroccans at the Beachmont, um, we thought this would be a perfect way to kind of focus our efforts on engaging that population. Um, so I'll just read for you on the left side. This is the actual language of our goal from the grant, um, that our goal is to research the diverse culture of Morocco by visiting historic sites and home cities of our students, interviewing Moroccans about cultural norms, and participating in local traditions to infuse experiences into curriculum and strengthen school home relationships with Moroccan families. Um, the picture here shows us visiting uh, with two of our Beachmont students who were on vacation back in Morocco. Um, and so we shared a meal with their extended family at their grandmother's house. Um, so we, on the right side um, of the slides, a quick overview of our process. So summer and fall of last year, we started gathering information about our Moroccan families and working with community leaders and staff at our school to really define our focus so that the project would be meaningful for our school. We submitted our application in January and in April received the award notification. Uh, we spent our three weeks in Morocco at the end of July and beginning of August. And we have two big projects upcoming um, as part of our implementation plan. A community night in November, which you're all invited to. Um, and in January, we'll be offering professional <coughs> development at a principal's meeting at our school, um, which we'll share a little bit more about in a few slides. Okay, so a little bit about our planning phase. Um, like I said, we started with our cultural survey early in the year, and then we sent out a second one um, to our Moroccan families to um, identify specific places that they were from and what they thought that we should take away from a trip to Morocco. We also met with local Moroccans to learn more about the culture, and they were also instrumental in fine-tuning the details of our travel and setting up homestays with families that we had connections to um, through those local Moroccans. Um, and we also surveyed our Beachmont colleagues to kind of gauge an understanding of Moroccan culture throughout staff and identify some areas that we could improve upon. Um, so through all this research, we narrowed down our itinerary to <coughs> 10 cities, and these included um, cities that were of Beachmont students and families, um, different places around the country, um, different physical landscapes, and also um, including culturally significant sites. So um, our three weeks in Morocco, I highlighted here in red the tour that we took around the country. We were moving very quickly and visited 10 cities um, in that time. And um, we stayed primarily with host families um, that had some sort of connection to Massachusetts, either um, you know, family, friends of students or some of the community organizers that we've been working with. Um, it was a great experience to kind of see more of the authentic family culture. Um, I think more of a rich experience than a typical tourist might have uh, received. So we experienced a lot of the traditions of hospitality, home cooking, um, and we even were invited to a Moroccan wedding while we were there, which was quite an experience. Um, our trip took us through diverse landscapes. We went to the desert, the mountains, um, beaches, forests that remind me of where I grew up in New Hampshire. Um, the hot 110 degree weather in the desert and <coughs> cool temperatures that you know, we would find at home as well. Uh, we saw a range of modern cities, ancient cities, and rural villages. 
And in each location, we tried to target cultural sites that would um, add, add some meaning to um, what we could take away from the trip. So we visited religious sites like mosques and churches, a lot of museums. Um, we toured some government buildings. Um, and in each city, visited the markets and the old part of the city as we went, um, and visited some um, institutions of higher education. Okay, so now we're gonna take you on a little virtual tour of what we did. Um, we first landed in Casablanca. Um, this is one of our hosts, Hamza, and we also saw one of the world's largest mosques, that's Hassan II Mosque in Casablanca. Um, Rabat was our second stop, which is the capital city, um, and we were able to tour the parliament building. Um, we had sort of special access thanks to a local connection. It's not usually open to the public, so we felt really um, lucky to be able to see kind of behind the scenes in government. Um, and we enjoyed a delicious seafood lunch and learned how to eat with our hands in the traditional Moroccan style. After that, we went up to the north um, coast of Morocco in Tangier. Um, some really beautiful views up there. And you can also see Spain um, in the distance. It's only eight miles away. Our next stop was Chefchaouen, um, which is known as the Blue City. Um, because of the distinctive blue color that most of the buildings are painted. Um, this is a smaller village up in the mountains, so we got to kind of contrast that with what we had seen in the, the busy cities. After that, we went down into Fez. Um, Fez is known for its handicrafts, um, so you can see on the left side, that's the tannery in Fez, and also on the right side, a nicely decorated pottery shop. Uh, one of the highlights of our trip was um, participating in a camel trek out in the desert. Um, so we traveled several hours by car down to a desert city called Merzuga, and we took from there an hour and a half camel ride out to a tent site, a nomadic tent site out on the sand dunes. So we spent the night there. Um, it was really hot, and we pulled the mattresses out of the tent and slept under the stars. It was a really amazing experience. Um, and we got up bright and early to see the sun sunrise um, and then trekked back as quick as we could to avoid the August heat of yep. the Sahara Desert. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that, we went to Marrakesh, which is one of Morocco's most popular cities and destinations. Um, we spent some time in the Medina um, and also on the bottom left, that's Jem Al Fana Square, another world-renowned um, main square. And we also visited the theological college, Ben Yusuf Madrasa. Um, Essaouira is known as the windy city in Morocco and provided much cooler temperatures, uh, which was a relief coming out of the desert for us. I'm not really used to 110 degrees. Um, we really enjoyed the city. It's beautiful right on the coast, um, and in particular the top right. Um, Essaouira is known for these um, famous blue uh, fishing boats, which was really um, some picturesque scenes. We, w we continued up the coast to Waladia, and we had just enough time to cool off by the ocean and have a seafood lunch with some of our hosts there. Um, Mohammedia was a really special place for us to visit because there are a lot of Moroccans in Revere that come from this small city outside of Casablanca. Uh, we toured around with Leila, who's the mother of some Beachmont students, so it was really special to experience um, the city with a local person. And um, the picture on the top right I want to draw your attention to, um, this is a sort of boardwalk area along the beach, and a lot of Moroccans from this area have said that it has a similar feel to Revere Beach, and so that might explain part of why, um, you know, Moroccans from the city might have chosen Revere, or you know, as a place that feels comfortable to to make a home. We also stopped in El Jadida, which is another city that um, students from our Beachmont School had ties to. Um, it used to be a Portuguese city, so we also saw some of the Portuguese influence there. At the bottom right, you can see that um, the horse show we went to, this was called the Fantasia, um, and it's a huge cultural event in Morocco. They have it all over the country in different regions. Um, so these show some of the pictures of the families that we stayed with um, that really added so much meaning to our trip. Um, so these are some Moroccans who live in Massachusetts who were traveling back for the summer. Um, some family friends of people that we met through our grant 
planning process. Um, and then again, the bottom right picture shows us visiting with some Beachmont students who um, were back on vacation. And the top right is um, we wore traditional kaftan gowns to the Moroccan wedding, which was really special. So a couple of things about moving forward. We have two major events coming up. Um, in November, we're going to have our Beachmont Abroad Morocco Community Night, where we'll invite students and their families and staff to come in um, view pictures and talk about some of our travels. And then next up in January, we'll be hosting a professional development to our colleagues with a focus on culturally proficient family communication, ideas for incorporating Moroccan culture into instruction, and also some strategies for increasing uh, Moroccan culture school-wide. Um, so thanks in large part to the generosity of the families who hosted us while we were in Morocco. Um, we were able to return to Revere with some of our grant funding intact. So we were able to invest about $500 into the purchase of Moroccan and Muslim interest books. So we're creating a lending library to um, share those resources with teachers throughout our building um, to try to provide some resources um, to increase the degree to which Moroccan culture is incorporated into just the daily life at our school. And the goal of our Morocco project also ties into the larger goal of our Beachmont School to um, make all the diversity and the different cultures present of our school a celebrated um, thing. So we are going to be hosting our second annual Beachmont Culture Night in April. The last one that we had last April was a huge success. We had 80 families in attendance. Um, with origins from all over five continents, and it was a really, really special night. We had food, we had some dancing, um, we even had some henna happening, and all students made some posters um, representative of their home countries. So it was really nice, and we hope you join us in April. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about our trip, you can visit our blog, um, which is listed there, or find us on Instagram at Beachmont Abroad. Um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about our project. Any questions from committee members? Uh, it's time. Not really a question. I'm just in awe of how well they planned this and what an interesting uh, preparation you did. Uh, it's amazing. And how you said there were 28 percent of the population. Uh, 20 percent. 20 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, in uh, in Beachmont. Yeah. Um, does that compare? Do you have any idea to the rest of the city? Um, I'm not sure, but I think that would be really interesting information to yeah. compile, so maybe right. that's something we can look into. And would you have any plans to share any of this with any of the other schools who um, teach it? We're know. very open yeah. to it. Uh, <laughs> we're kind of tackling Beachmont first, but um, definitely open to sharing what we've learned and also you know, ways that teachers can kind of take on this kind of professional development opportunities for themselves. We, um, it also seems like the first step among many right. that we can take to increase right. yeah. the Moroccan <laughs> culture and visibility in our schools. And um, we're lucky because there is such a vibrant Moroccan community that's growing in Revere, so there are small steps that um, anyone can take to you know, reach out and learn more about the culture um, without having to travel so far. Mm -hmm. And to your knowledge, are you the first ones who took advantage of that uh, grant? I don't know, maybe. As far as I know, yes. From Revere? Uh, I'm not sure. It's just yeah. our third year in Revere, so yeah. our, <laughs> our long-term memory is short. Yeah. But <laughs> We're hoping they've inspired many colleagues right. after yeah. they see this presentation. Absolutely. And anyone that wants some information about the grant could definitely get in touch. Um, we really had a great time working with them. So. Yeah. And you said you were going to do some um, professional development as well mm -hmm. in the school, too. So yeah. Oh, yeah. might end up doing more in other places, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Have our email. <laughs> we will be open to that. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Not only informative, but very interesting. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tai. Any other members? Uh, uh, Mrs. Gravelisi. Thank you, Mayor Rigo. Um, you had mentioned that you were going to share with your colleagues with professional development some of your ideas of implementing um, some of their culture into the curriculum. Can mm -hmm. you share any of that with us? That um, or is well, that some of it's probably still to be determined. We'll be happy to share works. information once it's been you know finalized. Um, 
But one thing in particular, thinking about the books that we've purchased, we were kind of envisioning that there are opportunities to share more about, like Ramadan, for example, giving information about mm -hmm. holidays that people might not, um, outside the community, might not know about. Mm -hmm. um, but also increasing just the daily visibility of, mm -hmm. um, of the culture. So including texts just for regular instruction that right. um, you know, right. reflect our students. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any other members? Uh, Mr. McGuire. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to accolade the uh, sentiment of your adventurism, but your dedication to the school system. Um, my only question I had was, we have a gentleman called Rashid that runs an organization in Riviera who said, uh, you know, I will take you to Morocco, and uh, I know the mayor, and he's given me all, he's a, Great gentleman. I was just curious if you had any interaction with him as a local representative. Oh yes, um, he was. Uh, he was part of a great team of local Moroccans, both in Revere, but in you know the, the surrounding room. cities um, that connected us not only with host families, but we right. were able to meet with other, other teachers while we were there. Um, so yeah, he was he was <coughs> instrumental um, as part of the team. I just I, I love to hear that that you know he was part of this, and mm -hmm. then you were mostly the biggest part of it. Thank you. You should take him up on the yeah. offer, and we'll give you some travel <laughs> advice. <laughs> Any other members? Just one quick comment. Um, this is a great example of what is so great about the city of Revere. Uh, and it's funny because I had a, a recent interaction with a, a young man. He's probably 12 years old. And I was in my office on Friday afternoon. He had come up to the window and just knocked on the window. The city hall was sh shut down because uh, we closed down at 12.15. And uh, I opened the window and I started talking to him and I said, what do you love about the city? And he said, I love the fact that my friends are from all over the world. And I go to school with kids from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was incredible. Mm -hmm. And this is a great example of, of the work that we're doing to, to, to continue that kind of notion. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your support. Mr. Sinella. Okay. That works. What, um, being French Morocco years ago, is French still the predominant language? Or, or is the different dialects in different parts of the country? Yes. Or what would be the national language? So the national language is Darija, which is the Moroccan, like, Arabic dialect. Arabic, okay. um, so there's actually a couple languages at play. Um, all the Moroccans read and write in modern standard Arabic, but the oral language is Darija, which is the dialect of Arabic. And there's also a group of people called Berber or Amazi, and they speak a different language as well. But all students around grade three learn French, so French is the official second language in Morocco. Thank you. And English. After that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Great job.